position Let it take you back and forth Another jam that's gonna make you scream for more From New York, London to Amsterdam I wanna rock your body Hello everyone, welcome to another Little Big Planet 2 tutorial. I'm going to start off just now with where I left off last time. I forgot to add a sensor onto my guy so that the zombies follow the, the control in air rather than following the player. Because otherwise they're just going to head towards you, you're sitting in the other control in air and they're not going to follow the receiver. Which is what you want because that's what your um, character is going to be. So um, I'm just going to do that then now. Uh, all you need to do is add a sensor to your control unit there and then make sure you turn the look at rotator uh, to make it follow your sensor and make sure you get the colors and everything set up correctly and then capture it and put it in all your put it in all your transmitters your transmitters your emitters um so yeah this is quite a long one today because I'm gonna go into health bars and it can get quite complicated and uh, there's also quite a lot of fails because I haven't done this since I made my zombie shooter and um, I haven't like gone over it I just kind of went straight in and it's like okay I've not been Little Big Planet in like a week or whatever because I've been lazy pretty much Um, so I just came into it I was like right, I'm going to record this and I just went in and started recording and I was like shit I'm failing quite a bit so but it's good because you get to see me making mistakes and um, you can learn from my mistakes as I learn from my mistakes so uh, it's all good so at the moment, I'm going to be, I'm trying to think what I'm doing right now, I'm watching my gameplay as I'm commentating here. Um, right, uh, to make a health bar, you need to create holograms, uh, holograph material. You, use, so you get a circle and make it bigger than, than your object and make sure it's, well just make sure it's bigger, pretty much. And you want to turn the brightness right down to zero. And then I put the animation speed down to zero just because the flickering kind of annoys me when I'm trying to do stuff. Uh, you then want to get a bolt and put it in the middle. It automatically snaps to the middle so you should be okay. Um, and then you want to put it over the middle of your object and just make sure you place it like dead in the center. You also want to make sure it's like just a thin layer just in the very top of your of your object. Um, so then you add a, a gyroscope to this. And this will just keep it dead still, no matter where you turn, that holograph material is going to be dead still. Put the speed up to quite high, and the strength up to full. And uh, visibility off. Visibility off. And uh, so now when you move about, that holograph will always remain pointing in the same way. You then want to add some holograph material to the back, behind where you want your health bar to be. Um, just like a big square of it will do. Uh, like just one thickness or however much thickness so that it's reaching from the top to, uh, of your object where your holograph material is down to the floor because that's where your health bar and shit's going to be and you want to glue this glue the holograph material to the holograph material now I made a mistake here of gluing the holograph material to the box but I will edit it in a minute and I'll show you how to do that and stuff I hadn't realised I'd made that mistake so now to make a health bar you can make a health bar whatever kind of shape you want I just like the semicircle so you get it the right size and then bring it to the front so you can edit it. And uh, so to edit, I just put the, again, the brightness down to zero. Or down to 30, sorry. Zero if you want it to be invisible. And I put it down to 30 and I changed it to green. Uh, turn animation speed off. So that it just kind of, it looks like a nice wee health bar. You then want to cut it up into bits. Um, and I made a little mistake here going into wood to try and cut it. And I was like, why is it not cutting? And I was like trying to change the size and stuff. Turns out you need the holograph material to cut holograph material. And I knew this because I'd done it before. I just completely forgot and it went out my head when I was recording. And I thought I'm just going to not bother recording all this again. I'll just do it and I'll explain my mistakes. And it helps you guys learn as well. So you need um, holograph material to cut holograph material. You just hold and try and go on and slice through it. And I didn't bother trying to make it all neat. I just went and sliced it into four parts. Uh, so it's rough, it's roughly there. So that's pretty much what you want to do if you're creating like an arc one like mine. It's getting hard to see because I don't have a background. I'll create a wooden but a carbon background in a minute, and you'll be able to see it all a whole lot better. So what I do now is I put my cursor over the holograph below, 
and press L2 to make it disappear. So I can then select the holograph at the top, which is the health bar, and then move it all down so it's at the very bottom. Uh, press L1 to pop all the stuff back up top, and I then glue that all to the holograph material at the bottom. Now this is where you have to be tricky. Uh, you have to unstick that because I glued the box down. You have to unstick the top bit from the box, okay? And then tilt the camera, and then so you can highlight the box, and then press L2 to make the box invisible. And you then grab the holograph material and stick it to the holograph material. And then you can press L1 to make the box visible again. So if you make it invisible, then you can just glue everything else together and it doesn't affect the box. Now here I made a mistake, because when I deselected, when I detached the holograph material at the top, I accidentally twisted it, and I didn't realise. So that moved the gyroscope, meaning that the health bar was pointing the wrong way. So I just have to quick fix, and moving the gyroscope back so it's horizontal. Horizontal? Uh, vertical, pointing up the way. Um, and then now if I go into play mode you'll see that it, it works fine. I don't even know if I'm going to play mode here or not. Oh yeah, I changed the brightness down to 30. I put it up to 40 by accident earlier on. Just, uh, I don't know, I think I was trying, thinking to make it look better brighter. But it just gives it kind of a, a glare and it's hard to see. So I put them back down to 30. And um, I can't remember if this is when I had the background or not. Yes it is. I had a cardboard background just so it's easier for you to see everything. Because uh, it's really hard to see against this blue. Because the holograph is just kind of like a light. And see there you go there. It's so much brighter already. So then uh, when I move that back down to the bottom layer. You'll still be able to see the holograph material through it. Even though it's on the same layer as the cardboard. So I'm going to play mode. You can see that the holograph material is invisible. Apart from what I had was green. And it stays around the bottom. But at the moment it doesn't react to anything, so if I hit those guys, it, they're not, they're not going to go down, and I'm not going to lose any health, and you're not going to die. So, to fix that problem, well first of all here I had to make the bolt invisible, I forgot to do that. So you'd have a bolt sitting on top of your head. But um, to make it possible for you to lose health, you need to add a selector to the, to the controller here. And this will just select each different bit. And turn each different part of your holograph off. So you want to create it two more than the amount of bits of holograph material you've got. So if you've got four bars to your health bar, you want to make six uh, sections to your selector. And then you want to add to this as well a uh, impact sensor, so that it can tell when you're being hit by a zombie. Um, so you want to spawn one of these zombies just now. Because you need to add a sensor to this, so that your impact sensor knows when it's a zombie you're hitting and you're not running into walls or whatever. So you add the sensor, make it whatever colour you want, I think I'll make it yellow or something, no purple, make it purple, purpley pink, pretty. <laughs> and you then go into your impact sensor, make sure you include all rigid connections, uh, touching no, and then require tag and make it the same colour as the tag that your zombies are, and then the rest just leave them the same. So attach this to the end, this cycle input to your um, to your selector, and that should be good. I went out for a, a pee there, that's why I paused it. <laughs> and then if I, I'll cut a little bit out, and I come back in now to finish it. I think I should maybe should have edited that and made it shorter, but the reason I was there, I was away for a pee because I was bursting. Um, so now you want to add a bunch of toggle switches. Toggle switches, speak English Ian, uh, to this, so that when it cycles through it toggles the um, holograph material on or off. So you want to add a, add a toggle for each bar of your health bar. Um, so if you've got four bars like I do, you add four toggles. And you want to connect uh, two, three, four and five to all these. You want to leave the first one blank. Because uh, with the selector switch, it always highlights the first one, so the first one's always on. So you want that just to be blank, because if that's on, then it's going to toggle your thing and it's going to screw it all up. So leave the first one blank, and that's like your open state. Yeah, you then want to attach all these. Once you've attached the the um, toggles, you want to attach each toggle to the corresponding bar. So one, uh, two, sorry, to the first part, and then so on. 
So as it cycles through one, two, three, four, five, it's going to cycle through your health bars, counting them down the way. So just make sure you get them in the right order. Uh, so they're all in the right order. The next thing you want to add is a destroy a destroyer. Um, so that once your health bar goes all the way down, you can destroy yourself. You can die. And uh, yeah, add that just with the last section of your cycle. Your selector, add that to the destroyer. And then when you go to play mode, this should work. I forgot to mention that you have to set all the all the toggles to yes, so that when you get hit by a zombie, it turns to no. So this is what I'm talking about fails here. I forgot to capture the zombie and put it into my emitters. So uh, it didn't work at all. So you have to die, you have to capture the zombie uh, that you made with the center in it. Each time you make a chain, you want to change a zombie, you have to spawn the zombie, like get it out of your tails box, make the changes, then capture again, and then put it in each individual emitter again. So it's quite annoying. So if you know what you want to do with your zombies, get it all done at the start, and then you don't have to go through all this of capturing the zombie again and putting it into each emitter because it gets quite annoying, trust me. I've got like 30 zombies on screen and they're like, shit, I've got to go through each single one. So um, now, if a zombie runs into me, you lose one bar each time as it goes down and then eventually end up with zero and then you hit again and boom, you're dead. And it just puts you back into your control at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an end game uh, tweaker, uh, I think, I don't know what I'm doing right now, I, think I, was, I was just thinking like what can I do, what can I do now, uh, I changed this, I don't know what I did, I'm fucking up, this was because, <laughs> that point I was like what am I going to do, and I didn't know what to do, and I was like okay I'll go back into play mode and I'm back into create mode and cut that bit out, so it looks like it's all just one smooth transition, but I forgot to cut it out, so never mind. Um, so you want to add the end game tweaker here. You want to add the X or gate, which means that it only works when one of the inputs work and not both of the inputs. And you want to get two batteries. Put one on your control emitter, and then attach it to the X or gate, and get one just on the background or anywhere. And attach that to the X or gate, so that now, when that battery on your control emitter is destroyed, it will activate your end uh, game ender because the XR gate only works when one of your control uh, when bleh, when one of its inputs is working if both of them are on it doesn't work and so you have both of them on and then when it gets destroyed there's only one left on and it activates your game ender and then you want to add a scoreboard at the end so that when you die you appear at the scoreboard so I'll demonstrate this for you right now go and get killed by a few zombies and when you do when you die it ends the game, and you would go to your control and error, but uh, it's create mode and doesn't do that for you. So I hope this was helpful guys, um, there'll be more in the future, maybe showing you some other stuff. That's pretty much the basics of a, a survival shooter. Uh, there will be other things, I'm going to try and figure out some stuff. I'm making a level at the moment, which I think is pretty cool, I'll show you guys some of that I think. And if there's anything else you want to know, let me know. Uh, there's other stuff in my head that I'm going to show in tutorials. But whatever you want to see, let me know. I'll see if I know how to do it. And if I do, I'll let you guys let you guys know how to do it, <laughs> pretty much. So yeah, thanks. Uh, like if you like. And I'll be back very soon. Woo!